Among the men honored by Civil War reenactors in East Tennessee is a Union soldier with the Michigan 17th Regiment who rushed into the teeth of battle carrying only a flag. I read the officer's report and it said he literally was shot in the head and it, the, the bullet came out in his right eye, but he kept carrying the colors until the officer ordered him to the rear. Amazingly, that soldier didn't die. No, he lived. <laughs> Joseph E. Brandle is one of 32 Civil War soldiers to receive America's highest award for selfless acts of courage. Those medals came in skirmishes across East Tennessee, his in Lenore City, but several were awarded on this soil in the Battle of Fort Sanders. Because there's a lot of waterways, uh, the railroads, the bridges were very important to both sides, so there were skirmishes back and forth. And Cynthia Tinker from the Center for the Study of War and Society at the University of Tennessee notes in mid-November of 1863, a Union retreat near present-day Lenore City was marked by not just Joseph Brandle's flag charge, but by the actions of his fellow soldier, Frederick Swift. And I don't know at what point Swift picked up the colors, but Swift received the, the Medal of Honor for the same type of action, for gallantly carrying the colors forward. Both hands are on the guide on, and they are moving forward, and they're just completely vulnerable. It's very important to carry the colors so that the troops could see and follow. It's also a very important matter of pride for the unit. You know, you're not supposed to let the colors touch the ground. Both Swift and Brandle received the Medal of Honor some 20 years after their service on Tennessee battlefields. And I hope people will think of that when they're on campus or around Knoxville or in Lenore City and they travel across these rivers and these bridges and the, see the railroads and, you know, think back to all the brave men that fought during the Civil War and the brave acts that took place. Born in the age of Lincoln, the history of the medal worn by America's most exclusive group of warriors today was forged by the bravery of men who fought, bled, survived, and died 150 years ago in East Tennessee.